Landing an AI engineer job takes more than just learning Python and building a few projects. Most people focus on the wrong things, and that's why they struggle to get hired. If you're only here for the technical resources, I will link them in the description, including ones from Datacamp, today's sponsor. But if you want a real strategy to break into AI, keep watching. I'm Jean, your trusted engineering mentor with 20 years in tech as a software engineer at WhatsApp before the 19 billion acquisition by Meta and later hiring engineers at Meta. I've seen what works. So I broke it down into a simple step-by-step -step system, start, level up, and strategize. Each step builds on the last, helping you avoid common mistakes and fast track your career. If this sounds helpful, hit that like button because it helps other people like you find this video too. So now that you've done that, let's dive in. Step one is to start. This is where most people get stuck. You feel maybe overwhelmed, unsure where to begin, and the doubt keeps you from taking the first step. You keep asking yourself, should I start learning? Is it even worth it? But the truth is that you can't think your way into becoming an AI engineer, you have to code your way in. That means writing code, even if it feels confusing, even when you're just typing and hoping something will work, that's normal, that's how everyone starts. Right now, your goal isn't to become an expert, it's to build momentum. So don't wait for the perfect plan, but just start. And if you're not sure how to begin learning AI and machine learning, I would recommend Datacamp and more particularly these two courses. Interactive learning is really important when you're trying to learn machine learning and AI. And that's why I would recommend the Datacamp learning experience. If you want to get serious about machine learning, I would recommend their machine learning engineer career track. This learning pass will teach you the fundamentals from beginning to more advanced skills with hands-on courses in ML Ops, end-to-end -end machine learning, and Python. On the other hand, if AI is what you want to specialize in, the Associate AI Engineer track teaches you everything you need to know about OpenAI API, Hugging Face, and ChatGPT prompt engineering for developers. With Datacamp, you're not just watching video tutorials, you're working hands-on on projects that help you learn by doing and boosting your confidence. You'll then be able to attempt the Datacamp AI Fundamental Certification, which includes a timed exam, which is a great way to stand out to employers. Once you've started coding and working on projects, the next big question is, what is next? What language should I learn next? What should I build? And honestly, at this stage, it really doesn't matter. Pick something accessible and get to work. That's why these tracks are so great because instead of wasting your time overthinking tools or languages, you just follow the track and keep moving forward. Now, if you have done that, you're approaching the end of level one and it's time for a key decision. By now, you've likely built five to 10 projects, whether through Datacamp or on your own. The exact number doesn't really matter. What matters more is that you have gained momentum. So what's next? Do you keep going down the path or is it time to pivot? So choice number two is to walk away. If you've tried coding and realize this is not working for you, that's completely okay. There's no shame in it. AI engineering isn't for everyone. And recognizing that early is a win, not a failure. The key here is that you have tried, you explored, you learned, and now you can move forward without regrets, no lingering what ifs. And sometimes the best decision isn't pushing through, it's more about choosing a path that excites you and that works for you. Or there's also choice number two, which is to switch tracks or pivot. Maybe you've tried AI, but you're not sure if it's your thing, then maybe you want to try ML or vice versa. Or maybe neither feels quite right for you, but you still enjoy coding and problem solving. If that's the case, you can consider exploring different tracks like web development, app development, game development, there are so many types of development, or even data science. There are so many options out there in tech. And if this sounds like you, you can go back to level one and start fresh with a new focus. And remember that no learning is wasted here. The skills that you have built so far will carry over into whatever path you choose next. So don't feel so bad about changing your mind. It's just called 
pivot. Choice number three is to commit. You've decided AI or machine learning is the path for you and you're ready to take it more seriously. If this is your choice, congratulations. Now you can move on to level two, which is to level up. This is where real growth happens, where you go from a beginner to actually getting good at AI or machine learning. Growth does take time, especially if you don't have a PhD or a mentor from a fancy school. This doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means you're learning on your own. So maybe you're making some mistakes, but you're pushing through. As Thomas Edison puts it, I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Learning AI or machine learning is similar. It's all about trial and error. At this stage though, you're not just building, you're building smarter. So take on more advanced projects that challenges you to apply new algorithms and tools. The goal isn't just to repeat what you've already done, but now you're pushing beyond your comfort zone. When you're at level one, realistically, you're probably not quite ready to land a job yet because companies don't hire you just because you started learning. They hire you because you're good. So how do you get there? There's really no single path to becoming a great AI engineer. Some people go through the PhD route, but that's not the only way, honestly. And you know, spending a decade in academia isn't really for everyone. I don't have a PhD either. But if you're not taking that academic route, you'll need to compensate in other ways to stay competitive and compete with other people who may have PhDs and just dumping a bunch of projects on GitHub won't really cut it. Instead, you want to focus on real impactful projects and experiences, the kind that employers would actually care about. And even better, if you can build something that real users find valuable. So for example, you can launch your own app, or build a website from scratch using AI tools. You can volunteer your skills for a local nonprofit or even take on freelancing gigs. The key here is to build experiences that have real world impact. And I talked extensively about this already in another video. It's called something like stop working on projects. So go watch that if you're interested. I do think that a lot of people underestimate the effort it takes to become a really good AI engineer. And the hard truth is there's really no shortcut here. I don't have a magic solution to make you become an AI engineer in a month. The only way forward is consistent learning and building real world experiences. Now, if you've made it this far, you are ready for level three, which is to strategize. This is where you again have three passes to choose from. Option number one is to be your own boss. If you go with this option, you can be your own boss, working on projects that genuinely interest you. You have the freedom to explore various areas, enhancing your overall skill set. But there is no guarantee this will lead you to a full-time job and your income may be good but unpredictable. It also means you're going to need a high level of discipline and motivation to stay focused and productive on your own. There is also option number two, which is to pivot again or try a different track. Shifting to another tech field, we already discussed that there are many options in tech. I also have a whole video on exploring career opportunities in AI, including technical and non-technical paths. So you can go watch that later. If AI feels really tough and you want to go another route, again, that's totally fine. But just remember, Tech fields are all challenging. They have different types of challenges no matter which route you go. So if you're quitting now, just because it's hard, you may end up quitting again after switching tracks. So make sure the switch aligns with your long-term goals and your passion, and it's not just an escape. Now, option number three is to stay on the AI or machine learning track, and if you do, you now need to strategize. To make your job search more effective, this means that you're going for a full-time job with a tech company. It could be a big company or a startup, but to make your job search more effective, you're going to start by checking where you stand. So if you're getting interviews but not getting any offers, it means you need to work on your interview skills. I talked to this one guy who said that he's never gotten an offer, but every time he interviews, recruiters always tell him, you did a great job, 
job, there's just not a fit for you right now. And I didn't have the heart to tell him that if he actually nailed the interview, they probably would have hired him. So if this sounds like you, you're getting lots of interviews but no offers, this means you need to practice interviewing. Now, this is a completely different skill set than knowing the technical stuff, right? You want to do lead code, mock interviews, you want to ask for feedback or even practice in groups with your friends. And you don't need to pay a ton of money for coaching or training. You can also try recording yourself and watch the videos. You can learn a ton from that. Just set up your phone, watch yourself, and this is all free, right? Also see if your school offers career services. They might be able to help and it's included in your tuition, right? I also have a lot of free resources on interview prep on my website, exaltitude.io, so check them out. Now, if you're not hearing from recruiters at all for interviews, that means your resume might need work. So here is an average stat just as a data point. In average, for every 100 applications, you can expect about 10 to 20 responses from recruiters. If you're more junior, divide the number by two. Now, if you're getting fewer than five interview calls, it's time to revise your resume. Studies show that recruiters scan resumes in six to eight seconds. I know it sounds harsh, but that's just what they do. And we can sit and complain about the broken hiring system, but unless you get hired, your influence to change practices is limited. Once you're in the industry, you can work with the managers or recruiters to change this practice. But for now, let's focus on getting hired. So if your resume is struggling to land interviews, you can check out the Ultimate Resume Handbook on my website. It's helped a lot of people with their resumes. It is $20 and I think it's worth it. But if $20 is too much of a stretch, you can grab the free resume checklist or the template also on my website. Or you can also watch this video to learn how you can improve your own resume without paying anyone else. I'll see you there.